Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this awesome toy chest with hand-painted lettering in front, cool feet with extra fancy runners, and a lid that stays open. So stay tuned, I'll show you how it's done. Alright, so to get started, you're going to want to cut up the corner supports. They're going to be made from 2x4s. They'll be 15 inches long, 1.5 inches on all sides, and you'll need 4 of them. Next, you'll need a 4x8 sheet of cabinet grade 3 quarter inch plywood. I had them cut off a 15 inch sliver along the 8 foot side, and then when I brought it home, I cut up two 33 inch pieces and two 14 inch pieces. Those will be the walls. Now, how this is going to be laid out is you're going to have your walls connected to the inside of the corner supports, and they'll be connected with wood glue and an alternating pocket hole pattern, as I'll show you later. And that'll be the main structure. And the rest of the plywood you can use as both the bottom as well as the top. And the top is going to have a half inch overhang as well as a routered edge to the lid to give it a good elegant finish. And then once it's all put together you should have a 14 inch side, 15 inches tall with a 33 inch front. Alright, so the first step is to cut the 2x4s to length. I'll then take it to the table saw and shave off one of the rounded edges. This allows for a good reference for all of the cuts. Next, use the width of the 2x4 to make the rest of the cuts. Doing it this way allows for a perfect square on your cut. And then just keep cutting until you have four corner pieces. Now I'm going to take the piece of plywood that I cut at Home Depot and cut it all to length. The first few cuts I'm making with a table saw, but can easily be done with a circular saw if you don't have a table saw. I needed a large sled for the first cuts, but this cut can easily be made with the fence. Once you've made all your cuts, you should have enough for the main structure as well as enough plywood left over for both the bottom as well as the lid. It's also a good idea to mark the inside bottom of each piece for the next step, because now I'm going to be making pocket holes to attach the corner pieces to the walls which will only be done on the sides and not the bottom and the top. It's a good idea to add two on the top and bottom for structural support and then one in the middle to try and deter against warping or bending in the plywood over time. Now grab two of your clamps, add some shims in between the corner pieces and the clamps, apply some glue to the plywood, and then tighten the clamps making sure the inside face is flush with the corner supports. And it's also a good idea to wipe away any excess glue that seeps out. With the clamp still in place, start applying pocket hole screws into the pocket holes. You can always tell if it's a pocket hole screw because it uses a square bit or a Robinson bit instead of the usual Phillips. And once you've given the glue at least 30 to 45 minutes to cure, you can take off the clamps and do the same for another side and you have both the side walls. Now we can start adding in the middle side walls. I like to mark where the other pocket hole screws go so when I make new pocket holes on the other piece, it won't interfere with the existing screws. To attach the wall, I'm just going to flip the one side on his face, add some glue, and then use its weight as a clamp while I screw it in. Again, making sure that the inside wall is flush with the corner support. Once you have both sides fastened down, make sure the glue has about 15 minutes to cure. Then you can flip it over and do the same for the last remaining side. Now I'm going to start cutting up the 3 quarter inch by 3 inch wood for the side styles using the same lengths I used when I was cutting up the plywood. And you only need to cut one for each side because later I'll cut them in half on the table saw. After you test fit all the pieces to make sure they fit, you can now cut them in half making sure to take into account the width of the blade so each side looks consistent. Now you'll have one piece for each side of the top of the chest. The 
And to attach them to the chest, I'm just gonna use a bit of wood glue and one inch 18 gauge brad nails. Now what you're going to want to do is cut two more of those pieces to use as cross members for the bottom. I flip the chest over and then I just apply a little bit of wood glue, add a clamp to hold them in place and just add more brad nails. Now I'm going to start measuring out a piece for the inside bottom surface of the chest. This is what's left of the 4x8 sheet of plywood after making that initial cut for the side pieces. After measuring out what you need, just use a straight edge and a circular saw to make the cut. I'm going to add this in to see if it fits. You always know if you have a good cut if it builds up air pressure behind the piece as you try to drop it in. And to attach it, I'm going to pull it back out and then just add wood glue all around the sides and then drop it back in. I'm also going to use brad nails to hold it in place. A tip for this is grab a piece of wood that's the same width as the plywood and then rest the nail gun on top of it which allows all the nails to go in at a straight line at the designated height. Now that the main structure is pretty much done, I'm going to cut off a piece to use as a lid. Again, this is all from the same 4x8 sheet of plywood. And here's the hinges I'm using. Really nothing special, I just like that they're black. Just make sure you don't get anything that's wider than the width of the wall that you're going to be mounting them to. When you attach the hinges on the back, make sure they're consistent on both sides. Then all you have to do is fold one of the hinges over onto its side, mark where the holes are, pre-drill, and then insert the screws. You want to fold them back because that way it'll align the hinge to the wall. Alright, so now for the hard part. I'm going to use a couple of shims to prop up the chest. Since the lid has an overhang on three of the sides, I'm going to align the back of the chest with the back of the lid, which will help me align the hinges on where they're supposed to go. Now I'll warm up my hot glue gun and apply some to the hinges, making sure the hot glue doesn't get into the holes where the screws will go, and then just press the lid against the hot glue until it dries. and then holding the lid tight to the frame, remove the shims and then prop it back upright. And then making sure the glue's still intact, slowly lift the lid up and then take a marker and mark where the holes of the hinges touch the lid. Doing it this way allows for a perfect alignment with the hinge to the lid to the chest and everything looks good. And then just rip off the lid and then peel off all the hot glue that's still on the hinge. Luckily it stays on the hinge and it's easy to get off. Now just flip the lid over and then pre-drill the holes where the screws will go. And then another trick for putting the lid onto the frame, just lay the frame down along with the lid, prop up the chest a little bit so the hinge is overhanging the lid just a little bit and then put them down and then drill them in and it's that easy. It seems like a lot of work, but you'd be surprised at how easy it is to misalign the lid to a chest using these hinges. I've done this a few times without this process and it's just been a mess. But doing it this way takes out all the guesswork. 
I'm just going to add a bit of style to the edge of the lid using a bell shaped router bit in my router. And I'm only going to cut away three of the sides and leave out the back side. Now it's finally starting to look like an actual toy chest. Now I'm going to start working on the feet, which are very difficult, so make sure you write down these measurements. Blade height, half an inch, and one and a half inches from the back of the blade. Now take a straight edge or a piece of wood and make it 45 degrees from the table saw blade, and then clamp it down, making sure the piece of wood you use is one and a half inches from the very last two of the table saw that sticks out. Now cut a piece of 2x4 at least 10 inches in length and then slowly raise the blade 16 of an inch at a time. Do this until the blade is half an inch high, which will give you the right amount of cove in your piece of wood. It's a slow process and makes a lot of dust, but it's definitely worth it. Now what you want to do is completely round over the curve so it looks fluid with the cove. And when you're done, it should look just like that. Now what you want to do is set your miter saw to 45 degrees and cut away the corner. Now mark one inch from the initial cut and then make a 90 degree cut. Now move your miter saw another 45 degrees, measure out the same length of the cut, and make an opposing 45 degree angle cut. Now you should have two pieces. What you want to do is turn them around and put them face to face so you have this shape. Now just add a little bit of wood glue, spread it around, and then start using rubber bands as clamps. Now what you want to do is take it back to the sander and sand a bit of a curve to the straight edge on the outside. It's kind of hard to explain, but you'll see here. You just want to get like a nice, gentle curve so it doesn't look squared off on the sides. And just be patient with these, because it took me a few tries to get these right, but it was definitely worth it. Now to attach them, you're just going to want to put them in your pocket hole jig and put pocket holes in the backs of them. And then to attach them to the chest, just apply some wood glue and a bit of weight, let it dry for about 10 minutes, and then screw it in. Because if you try to add the pocket holes while the glue's still wet, it'll move around on you. Now I'm going to start making the curved apron that'll go along the base. For this I'm going to use a 6 inch wide by half inch thick piece of wood that's going to be the same width as the front and the back. Here I'm just finding the center of the piece and then marking down three or four inches depending on how much of a curve you want. And I'm just going to do this freehand. Uh, there's really no special way to do this, just eye it up and make sure it's straight and symmetrical. That's going to be the hardest part. Just take your time and it'll come out looking pretty good. Alright, so to make this cut, I definitely recommend a bandsaw. My bandsaw isn't too good with curves, so I'm actually going to use a jigsaw. And if you take your time, it works just fine. Now with the chest sitting upside down, you're going to want to mark an ideal height from the top where it will complement the curved feet as well as give you enough space on the bottom where it's not dragging across the floor. And the purpose of leaving pencil marks is to make sure each side is even. So wipe away the glue and see where you left the mark and then line it up and just use glue and brad nails. And then just do the exact same process for both the sides as well as the back. Now you're going to want to sand the entire thing. I'm going to start out with 150 grit. That'll really eat away things that are uneven or just don't look right. Or eat away any uneven cuts left over by the jigsaw.
And then once you're done sanding, just grab some generic spackling, nothing special, and fill in any gaps and cover all the knots, because they'll soak up the most paint. Then once the spackling dries, take it outside and do some detail sanding with anything above 300 grit. This will really smooth it out and give it a good finish for when you paint it. Now I'm going to use a real basic, inexpensive white house paint because when you paint wood initially, it's gonna soak up substantially, and you'll still see the grain, you'll still see the wood, so it takes a couple coats to cover it up. But when you spend the extra money on a specific type of paint or a specific color, this will help out a lot because you'll only need to use one or two coats, and it definitely helps to use a foam brush because rollers kinda leave a texture, paint brushes definitely leave a lot of texture, but you won't have to worry about the wood soaking up different areas depending on the grain or if you're using end grain or anything like that. So it takes a little bit of extra time but in the long run it helps out a lot and you'll have a great product when it's finished. And it's also a good idea to disconnect the lid so you don't accidentally paint over the hinges. And now I'm going to add some furniture feet. I add a little bit of super glue because in my experience they always fall off chairs. So just add a little glue and you're fine. Now I'm going to start painting the name on the front of the chest. I have the name of this font in the description, you can print it out if you'd like, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over the sides so that the edge of the lettering is on the edge of the paper, and then I'm going to measure the width of that, take the width of the chest, minus them, and then divide it in two, and that'll tell me how much space will be on both sides of the piece of paper, so it's centered perfectly, and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm just going to unfold it, mark where it goes, and then I'm good to go. Now what I'm going to do is a simple carbon transfer. For this, just grab a piece of charcoal or a pencil, flip the piece of paper over, color in the back of the logo. You can hold it up to the light to see if you've got everything. And once you've covered up the entire back of the logo, flip it back over, line it back up onto the chest, and just apply a tape to all the corners, making sure it doesn't move in the process. And all you have to do now is draw a simple outline on the text that you printed out. And then after you've done a complete outline, just lift the piece of paper up and what you're left with is the logo transferred onto the chest. Now to paint it, I'm just going to use a simple 90% white, 10% black paint mixture with just average everyday paint you can pick up at a craft store. And once you fully, evenly mixed up the paint, just start painting in the lines. Really nothing special here, just take your time and it'll look great. It really helps to have a chair that rolls too. And then once you've given the paint enough time to dry, just grab a wet rag and start wiping away the charcoal. You can even use a simple pencil eraser. But after you do that, just touch up the paint where needed and then you're fine. And now all that's left to do is put the hardware back on. If you still have a couple furniture feet, add them to the lid where they make contact with the base. This will make sure if it's slammed shut at any time in the future, it won't chip or wear down the paint. Again, I'm just adding a little bit of super glue because I don't trust the adhesive tape that comes with these. Alright, so now on to the lid supports. I actually went through five of these before I finally found two that didn't break. And the reason for that is they're just cheaply made, so be careful when you get them and use them. Uh, the heads of the screws broke off when they were being tightened, as well as the rivets on the actual hinges broke. So returned them, and then bought these two, and then actually got my own screws to use on them. And they're very, very difficult to align, so just keep down these measurements. The bottom part is three quarters of an inch from the edge, and then the top piece, the bottom screw there is four inches from the hinge. And if you do that, it'll work. And it took a long time for me to get that right. And then the resting lid angle is about 55 degrees. You'll know you installed everything right if they click, just like this. 
So definitely take your time, they're not easy to install and the instructions were no help at all. So get those measurements and just take your time and if you need to return them, it's all good. I know I did. All right guys, and that's all there is to it. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. I'm always quick on getting back to people. And uh, stay tuned till next week to see what else I have coming up. I have uh, some really cool news and some cool announcements coming up. I just signed up for Patreon, so I'd love to see your support. There's a link in the description for that. And uh, I will see you next time. Thank you.